Swamps and Mario have a pretty long history since they first debuted in Super Mario Bros. 3 in 1988. Instead of just moving up and down at a linear pace, Thwomps take a small pause between going up slowly and crashing down quickly. I've loved Thwomps since I first saw them playing Mario 64 growing up and I wanted to find a way to implement their movement patterns in Game Builder Garage. So we're going to start off as usual with our basic player character. I have a Thwomp angry face, a passive face, and a general gray texture. Now I tried to use a bunch of timers and convoluted logic. That was too complicated. And using the usual timeline map setup got a little out of hand because of the way you have to time everything. So I ended up with a different solution that uses math and frames. So we're going to start with a basic Thwomp object that's visible, solid, movable with some simple rectangular dimensions and a connection point of center center. Then we're gonna add another box and we're gonna have it so that it's only visible with a connection point of center center as well. That's gonna be the pivot point from which the thwomp will move up and down. Since it's not movable, it'll stay in place. Then we'll add a Y slide connector so we can slide the thwomp up and down in the Y axis. We'll connect our pivot point to the bottom and the thwomp box object to the top. Now I'm going to create a, another square, another box object based off of the original, and I'm going to make it non-solid and invisible and make it a little bit wider on the Z axis and a little bit bigger than the original box. And I'm going to attach a thwomp texture to the Z positive and Z negative of it. Then we'll take the gray texture and apply it to the original thwomp box. That's going to make it so that the thwomp texture is a little bit bigger than the box itself. And I think that looks a little bit better overall. Then we'll move over the Y slider and place the thwomp where you want it to go in its resting state. You can put it directly over the center of the pivot and place it on the map where it will look good. I want it to go up by one and a half units. So I'm going to pinch or cap the input on the slide connector between zero and 1.5. The main mechanism that we're gonna use to keep track of the slide position is a counter. Now we're gonna make use of the fact that the game runs at 60 frames per second. And I want the total upward and resting time of the thwomp to be three seconds. So three times 60 is 180. We're gonna set it to loop between zero and 180. Then we'll get a map node on so that we can convert this counter output into something that the slider can read. Counter into map and map into slider. Our output range is going to be the same as the slider input range, 0 to 1.5. Our input range will be 0, but instead of up to 180, we want the thwomp to rest for the last second. So we'll want it to stop counting at the 120 mark, which would be 2 seconds. So the input range will be 0 to 120. Then to count up on the counter, we'll need some kind of input, and we're going to use a flag node on. We'll take the flag node on output and put it into the count up, and we'll set an on start node on to turn the flag on at the beginning of the level. So now you'll see the thwomp will go through its natural process, where it'll go up, and then it'll pause for a second before slamming down. That's because the loop is bringing that counter value back to zero, which is going to instantly launch the slider downwards. Now what we're going to add is a pause at the bottom. We'll add an equal comparison node on with a constant node on set to 179 attached to the comparison input so that when the counter is at 179, we'll turn off the flag and we'll start a timer. This is gonna be the amount of time that the thwomp takes a pause at the bottom of the strike. So in this case, I put one second. At the end of the second, we'll turn the flag back on and start counting again. Then we'll agonize for a while trying to get the perfect thwomp sound, which took way longer than I'd like to admit, and I still haven't quite got it right. It's gotta be way deeper than that. Next, we're gonna quickly and easily manage which texture face is currently being shown. Since the flag on means the thwomp is going up and pausing, we'll have it so that the flag on is the resting texture, and we'll have it so not flag or when the flag is off to the angry aggressive texture. Then we'll make sure we connect both of them to the right object, and our thwomp will now change expressions. You can add more stages here to make the animation smoother, and of course you can draw it better than I did. Lastly, we want the thwomp to actually destroy the person or cause damage, so we're going to add a small box to the bottom of the thwomp box object. We'll make sure that it is set to center y negative so that it sort of overlays itself with the box as much as possible. And we'll set it so that it's only visible and movable for now so that we can see it, but later we'll want to turn it invisible. We need to make sure it's solid so that it actually destroys the target. And our thwomp should be all done. This way, you don't get destroyed when you touch it on the side or you try to platform on it, but you will get instantly crushed if you are underneath him at the wrong time. Trying to smoothly replicate Mario enemies is usually pretty fun since you'll realize that there's a lot more nuance and detail in them than you originally thought. 